Okay, I am in Spring, Texas, helping a relative install a battery backup. He has these three AGM batteries, and they're about uh, how many amps? 245. 245 amp hours each. They were given to him by a friend. Thank you, friend, because they are nice. They're about five years old. Should have about five years left. Um, four or five years left. Uh, the uh, I thought that the copper lugs, uh, the batteries were going to have cop t terminals for the copper lug, but they had regular battery terminals like you would find on a car battery. So what we did, went to the Wally Mart and bought um, some of these uh, terminal connectors that had some posts on it like you would use if you were retrofitting a car that, that has the um, side uh, battery post. Anyway, and we will go positive to positive to positive and negative to negative to negative and I'll show you that when we're through with okay, that. Okay, so we run the cables from positive to positive all the way across, negative to negative all the way across and we will be taking loose the um, this um, nut as well as the um, negative nut on the other battery, the far battery, to um, run to the inverter. Uh, we just used number four wire here. This was some wire I had at the house. already had the terminals on them and we decided to use that. If he wants to change it out someday, it's very easy to do now that we've got all the terminals on here and everything. You just unscrew it, unscrew it and do it. Um, let me think of anything else I need to tell you before we move on. I think that's it. It's going to be a nice backup battery bank. Okay, here it is all hooked up. We've got again number four wire running between the batteries this is a 2500 watt power inverter and I will put a link to it below the video it's a whistler uh, highly recommended great reviews uh, I don't own one myself but this one was bought uh, upon the recommendation or the the reviews that are on Amazon just some great reviews for it uh, can see the red and the black so we've got the positive circling around down to the positive one thing about these uh, these type battery terminals with that thing sticking up you have got uh, plenty of room to add some things you want to add solar you've got enough uh, of that nut sticking up to uh, unscrew it and put a uh, a lug there coming from your solar charger whatever so I kind of like these that's the way we had to do it anyway because of the battery post but uh, this is the negative coming off going to the negative side of the Whistler inverter. Um, got it encased in a nice little stand here. And here is the readout on the inverter. 124, I mean 12.4 volts is what the battery bank has right now. And then when we uh, put a drill on it a while ago, it it surged at about 350 and settled down um, to uh, I think it was 130 or something like that. So it tells uh, I don't know what else it tells. I hadn't read the book, uh, the the manual on it, but it tells um, your DC voltage as well as your output, your load. And uh, so this is pretty cool. I'll hook up the battery, turn this off, hook up the battery charger, and show you the whole setup. So here's the whole setup. The uh, battery charger is on. The battery showed 12.4 when we hooked it up. We turned it on. It's already up to 12.6 pretty quickly. Uh, and it comes up. It'll probably show 13 a minute. Uh, simply because that's what it's... Uh, it's probably going to float at about 13.3, 13.5. But my point is, we did this in about an hour. Less than an hour. And that's stripping the cable. Now we already had the little cables made, but stripping the big cables, mounting the inverter, he already had the batteries here, but this this was done very, very quickly. Um, you say, well, I don't have, nobody's going to give me any of these nice batteries. Well, you know, you don't have to have batteries like this. Get some uh, marine batteries, deep cycle batteries. You do not want just a car battery, but a marine cycle, deep cycle battery and get as many as you can afford at the time. Don't buy one this year and one next year and one the year after that because they all need to be about the same age or they start uh, bringing each other down, you know what I'm saying? 
So, uh, I think uh, I think that's going to be a, a good inverter for him. It's upside down, but it says Whistler, 2,500 watt power inverter. Um, I believe these batteries will last him a good while, and when they go out, um, we can uh, he'll scrap them and. He'll probably go buy some more like them, or even just some uh, some marine batteries. So don't don't uh, fail to do something simply because you don't have access to these big batteries or batteries like I have in my other video, my solar power video. Uh, this this can be a setup could be set up just exactly like this with uh, maybe three or six marine batteries. And uh, anyway, read up on it. Uh, read up on the Whistler and again I'll have a link below to the Whistler inverter yes uh, it needs a fuse and he will come in here we didn't have one right now but he will come in here at some point cut the positive put an inline fuse here uh, and uh, you know we'll do that fairly quickly we'll, we'll get to get together and order one and, and he can put that in later but for right now we just want to test it make sure it's working and it is absolutely working. So, um, back off and let you see the whole thing. It takes up about two feet by four feet and uh, could have been done in about three feet by two feet probably. Doesn't take up much room and it will give him the power he needs if the lights go out. It'll run, uh, well, not sure how far they'll go and how far they'll run because we just hadn't tested them, but those are big, big batteries. Those are nearly twice the size of mine. Each one of those is about um, uh, mine are 170 amp hours and those were around 225, 250 so those are nearly twice the size of my batteries so those are nice uh, nice batteries. The guy upgraded his solar uh, setup and gave him these so uh, I would highly recommend that you get some kind of backup for things that are uh, coming down the road um, the spring being close to Houston this is hurricane prone area good uh, to have something like this and um, get you a good inverter, one that will run several things such as a refrigerator. Uh, we were looking at, he just got a new refrigerator, we were looking at the cost of running his refrigerator and broke it down to, it was $53 a year, 15 cents a day to run his refrigerator. So his refrigerator should take very little juice out of here to run and it's a big honking refrigerator. The refrigerators now are just so uh, efficient and um, if you've got an old one and wanting to do solar wanting to do something like this a battery backup if you've got a real old refrigerator buy a kilowatt um, you have yours handy get a kilowatt meter and just see what your appliances uh, use see what your uh, see what your uh, refrigerator uses and uh, but this is a kilowatt you plug it in, it tells you how many watts your, um, the, the appliance, whatever you have plugged in the front of it there, see it plugs in the back. Whatever you have plugged in the front, it will tell you how many watts it's using, how many amps it's using, and how the kilowatt hours if you leave it on there a long time. And you can see on startup what your, uh, what your appliance runs on startup as well as after it levels out. But that refrigerator he bought, uh, man, it won't even put a dent in these batteries. Not a dent. Shouldn't. So, uh, all that he has to do after that is just run maybe a few fans and some lights and uh, gotta have the big screen. <laughs> okay, so we're gone, we are charging. It's up to 14.3 charging, putting a good charge in these batteries. That's a 40 amp. Uh, I'll put a link also to some chargers below. That is a Pro Series DSR, I believe it is. Uh, personally, I've got a um, uh, Schumacher but uh, this is a pro series and it's doing a heck of a job it's putting 14 and a half volts in them to give it a quick charge it'll get these batteries up to about 27 9 27 set I mean 12 7 12 9 something like that and then it will uh, start leveling off and shut shutting down tapering down so get you uh, get you a few batteries um, yes they're not cheap but um, buy the best battery you can buy and buy as many as you need when you buy them, don't space them out and get you a system like this for a hard time. So and here's a shot of it with the uh, countertop on it, makes a nice little workbench. Workbench has the batteries underneath. What I failed to tell you was that when this, when he needs to use this, 
Uh, he will obviously turn on the uh, inverter. The fan runs when you first turn it on, and then it kicks off, uh, and then will only come on, I assume, when it uh, gets a little hot. Um, and what it'll do, there's three places here to plug a uh, three outlets there to plug extension cords in or whatever. He will take those and run them through the house and and uh, power things as necessary. And uh, so it's just a, strictly a backup and uh, will only be used as such. But I think it's a pretty neat setup. It's a pretty inexpensive setup. That is about 170, 80 bucks, I think, for the inverter. Uh, again, batteries uh, just depends on what kind you get. They they range from uh, 70 or 80 dollars to hundreds and hundreds. And uh, I'm not sure what the charger was. Probably 60 or 70. And uh, but anyway, a nice little setup for emergency power. And uh, but I just failed to tell you that uh, it's probably self-explanatory, but that he will can be coming off the inverter and going back into the house with um, an extension cord or extension cords, and we'll split accordingly as he gets uh, one strung out, and he'll put a, maybe a three-way on it, and go uh, take one of them, do some lights, and the other one maybe to a window AC, something like that, and we'll see uh, we'll see how it works whenever he um, whenever he has to use it, hopefully. He won't, but that's what this is all about. It's a backup just in case, okay? I believe we are gone.